In today's video, we're checking out my top 25 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What's up guys, we're back with another top 25 rare Yu-Gi-Oh cards video. I haven't actually done an update on this since 2021, I believe, early 2021. So it's been about two years. I did a video recently talking about how much money I've lost on those top 25 specific cards from 2021. Go check that one out if you missed it. It was pretty interesting to see like how much the card market has come down. You're gonna see it more today because I actually updated my top 25 in that past video. I just did like the same top 25 that I had in 2021, but it's changed a lot since then. I have a lot of different cards. So I wanted updated i've had a few requests to do this so let's just go through it before that i have a giveaway and since it is mostly graded cards in this i figure i'd give away a graded card i have a bgs 10 sui Jin that we got in a collection recently i figured this would be a pretty amazing giveaway i mean almost a black label 10 card all you have to do is like the video be subscribed turn on notifications let me know your favorite card that i have in this top 25 and your rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card all right starting at number 25 we have the ancient gear golem ultimate rare first edition you guys probably probably have seen my grading video when I got this back recently. You can go check that one out if you missed it. It was a pretty awesome return. I also had this on my top five pickups of 2022. So it's a pretty new card to my collection, but it's still worth about $1,600, which is a crazy price for a Yu-Gi-Oh card at this point. It is an ultimate rare. It's for first edition, the Lost Millennium. So in those GX sets, the ultra rares are really hard to pull at ultimate rare. So this is one that's extremely hard to pull out of the Lost Millennium. And then it's also a PSA 10. So of course, Gem Mint 10 is gonna make everything more expensive even with the recent crashes in prices. Gym and tens are still more expensive than raw cards, like buy a lot. So this is our number 25 card. One of my favorite cards, iconic in the first episode of the GX anime. So it's pretty cool. At number 24, we have Gaia the Fierce Knight. This is one of a few in a row that have the exact same price. So I did some research on these prices. Sometimes they haven't sold in a while, so it's kind of hard. You kind of got to guesstimate. But this card I think had sold recently. This is a first edition Legend of Blue Eyes card. So Legend of Blue Eyes was the first set ever. This is an ultra rare out of the set. Set, so it's pretty hard to pull and then of course it's pretty iconic because yuki used this card quite a bit in the anime this card has come down quite a lot it's only about one thousand eight hundred dollars now which is still insane like i mean that's a lot of money for a Yu-Gi-Oh card but it was up around like three thousand at one point so this card has come down quite a bit due to the recent card crash but still a pretty solid value for a pretty iconic card and also i just really like this artwork i think it is really really cool kind of sucks though 2300 normal Sorry, Yugi, not very good. At number 23, we have the Cyber In Dragon Ultimate Rare. This is only a PSA 9, if you notice. This card is worth the same amount as the Guy of the Fierce Knight, the $1,800. If this was in a 10, this would be probably the most expensive card I own. It's a very, very rare card to get in PSA 10. Ultimate Rare, as I said about the Ancient Gear Golem, this is an Ultra Rare in Cybernetic Revolution. So it's really hard to get an Ultra as an Ultimate Rare, but this one is in fact that. This is an iconic card from the GX anime. Zane used it quite a bit. It was insane. I mean, if you watch that show, you were like, wow, I like Cyber Dragons. I like Cyber and Dragon. It's crazy. It's huge. Use it with Power Bond. It becomes eight thousand you know it's just so awesome and iconic cybernetic revolution was such a playable set back in the day that it was a lot of it was open so now even finding this you know being able to pull it at all is pretty difficult so it's an expensive card so one thousand eight hundred dollars for this one at number 22 we have our blue eyes toon dragon we actually pulled this one 2019 i think out of a magic ruler box and ended up grading it at 10 back then it was worth about 325 dollars in a psa 10 it has gone up from there a lot but it used to be about four thousand dollars during the card boom it's definitely come down from there. This card is also $1,800. So there's several in a row here that are kind of tied. You could flip flop them in any position pretty much. This Blue Eyes Toon Dragon is an iconic card though that Pegasus used. Really awesome secret rare Toon card because Toons are a really popular archetype. And then of course, the Gym Mid 10. This one is a pretty high pop card though. There's a lot of these graded 10, but even with a lot being like 100 and something, there's still only 100 and something in the entire world. So fairly rare, $1,800 for the Toon Dragon. Then at number 21, we have my Blue Eyes Shining Dragon from Retro Pack 2. This is one I couldn't really find the price. I have it at the same $1,800. I couldn't find the price because there hasn't been a sale of this one in a while. If it was a PSA 10, this one would be a very high price. This for some reason is a really iconic card, I guess from the movie, because everyone got the movie card and they thought they had this version. This is actually the Retro Pack version, Secret Rare, which came out later. So it's actually not even the original print of this card. But PSA 9 is a pretty nice grade for this card and Retro Pack 
pack two has gotten insanely expensive. If you want to open it up and try and pull this card, you're going to be spending thousands of dollars to actually pull it. So 1800 seems pretty reasonable. I think last time I had it, it was like at 2100 or something. So I bumped it down a little bit because of the, the card, you know, crash basically. So I figured it's come down. It could be a little bit lower than this though. And our final card at the same price, we have Elemental Hero Air Neos Ultimate Rare First Edition. We recently graded this card. This is about $1,800. If it gets a 10, this card's crazy because it's the Forbidden Yu-Gi-Oh card. I mean, the, we don't think they're going to ever reprint it again. I mean, they might, but they might not. They've had seemed to have some sort of copyright issues or something with this card. So it only has two printings, the same set, Ultra Rare and Ultimate Rare. So this Ultimate Rare copy is the highest rarity you're ever going to get, assuming they don't reprint it. So the Air Neos is pretty iconic for that reason. It's also an Elemental Hero, which is a fan favorite archetype so a lot of stuff going for this card and psa 9 pretty strong for an ultimate rare so about 1800 i think there actually was a sale for this one so pretty reasonable i think all right we are cracking the top 20 and this card the elemental hero phoenix enforcer finally does have a real sale i saw it on ebay i couldn't believe that because every time I've done this, this has not had a sale. I bought this card from a friend of mine on Instagram, Fiche, and it was about 300 something, maybe 270, something like that. This was back in 2018 or 2019. I can't, it was either early 2019 or late 2018. My very first graded card. I've had it ever since then. This is such an awesome card because it is also an ultra rare in a GX set. And as I've said, ultra rares and ultimate rare are really hard to pull. It's out of Enemy of Justice. I opened eight boxes of that set or nine, never got this card. So that's how hard it is to pull. Compared to like current Starlights, it's easy to pull because the current starlights take tons and tons of boxes but back then these ultimate rares were some of the hardest things you could pull they're probably pretty similar in terms of ultra rare ultis to ghost rares they're about one per case and of course this is a gym mint 10 elemental hero all that adds to it this card sold recently for 1850 dollars at number 18 we have the Rainbow Dragon Misprint from Gladiators of Soul. There's two versions of this misprint. There's also a tactical evolution version, which has the effect version is basically what they call it because it has the effect borders, which is worth a lot more than this one. But this is still a pretty popular one. It's also in a BGS 9, which is one of the highest grades for this card. I don't think there's ever been a BGS 10, but there has been like one or two 9.5s. So it's pretty rare to get in this high of a grade. It is also really cool because it literally just has the wrong name on it. It says Rainbow Dragon instead of being the Chaos Neos, which is insane. There wasn't a recent sale when I was looking, but the last time I had checked, which wasn't too long ago, was when we did that update video. There was a bunch of sales around $1,900. So I, I kept it there. I think that's pretty reasonable for something like this rare to get. So Rainbow Dragon misprint, one of the most iconic misprints in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. At number 17, we have the right leg of the Forbidden One first edition. I actually bought this card for like $3,750. Let me tell you, it is not that much anymore. It's definitely less. Uh, there was one for sale. I think Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh has one for sale for $2,400 on eBay. So I just guessed $2,000 on this one because it's probably not $2,400 because that one would have sold. Probably theoretically, but with these high-end cards, it's like maybe the right buyer is not here looking for it or whatever. So there's all, th there's all that that goes into play. But I think $2,000 is pretty fair for a first edition Legend of Blue Eyes Ultra Rare, even though the guy was $1,800. So maybe you could say it was a little bit lower. But the Exodia is so iconic. This one by itself, it's like, okay, it's a leg. Who cares? But if you have all five pieces together, it's insane. Just like in the show. Then at number 16, we have the Dark Paladin from Magicians Force First Edition. This card got up to like $5,000 at one point. There's a couple of different versions of this. This is technically the error artwork because this card was actually supposed to be a Duel Masters Guide artwork, and then they accidentally put it into Magicians Force. So in First Edition Magicians Force, you would pull this card rather than the corrected artwork, which is the one you get in Unlimited Magicians Force. I'll have a picture pop up right now of the corrected artwork. If you did end up pulling this in a Magicians Force booster box back then, you could actually send it in to get the corrected artwork so for that reason a lot of people really like their corrected artwork because you had to, like take steps to actually get the card so it was like rarer but then there are people out there with like 50 copies of each so keep that in mind if you're trying to spend a lot on a dark paladin i think that this artwork's really really awesome and i think it's really good so it's pretty iconic it fell a lot to under like it was like 1800 i think at one point i've got it at two thousand dollars i think it's rebounded a little bit so i'm thinking two thousand dollars for the dark paladin error artwork then at number 15 we have the Dark Magician. So speaking of Dark Paladin, we have Dark Magician. This is the first edition copy from Legend of Blue Eyes. This is actually the one I pulled with Leonhardt about a year and a half ago, maybe even two years at this point. It's crazy how long that's been. This unfortunately did get the nine, but it's a pretty amazing card. If it was a 10, it'd be one of my most expensive cards, but unfortunately it's not. It's just a nine, but being that iconic from the show, it's not the 
show artwork so that kind of hurts it a little bit but i've always personally liked this artwork i think it looks awesome i don't remember which version i had as a kid it was probably the bpt version but i really liked the look of this card and i thought it looked amazing so it's nostalgic for me personally i've got this at about two thousand dollars i couldn't find any any sales on this so i think it could actually be more than this it might be like 2500 but i couldn't find any sales recently i'm going with two thousand dollars seems pretty fair for this card at number 14 we have another legend of blue eyes ultra rare that i pulled the red eyes b dragon and actually i think that the dark dark magician could be like a similar price to this but i found a psa 9 sale i know this is bgs but this was also graded 9 at psa so it's basically a psa 9 i found a sale for 2227 dollars so the dark dark magician could be up there or this could be down there because it's bgs however you want to look at it but the red eyes black dragon we pulled this this was a huge video for my channel when we opened the legend of blue eyes booster box pulled the red eyes in the last pack it was absolutely crazy it seemed scripted almost because i pulled it at the end i weighed out the packs hoping to get it you know earlier so i could keep some of the packs and then that didn't work out so i had to open all the packs i was completely like devastated i knew i wasn't going to get anything and then we pulled this one of the most epic cards that i own just in terms of the memories and the nostalgia i'll definitely never part with this card no matter what the price is so pretty excited about you know still owning this card i think it's probably worth 2200 something like that so pretty solid bgs i mean i do have several bgs cards now but it's very annoying when i do these and try to stack these up and it just doesn't fit you know they don't fit together and at number 13 we have my summon skull from metal raiders first edition this card is a psa 10 so that helps but this card was in like my top five for a while with how expensive it was this thing has crashed hardcore i think it was like six or seven thousand dollars at one point during the boom and it is all the way down i think the 2005 500 dollars so we're at 2500 bucks for this card which i mean that's an insane amount for a Yu-Gi-Oh card so it's really not that crazy but we'll look at this epic artwork this not being the first print i mean they had the common version in the starter deck first but everyone wanted the ultra rare it's so shiny it's awesome an iconic monster from the anime summon skull is just too cool 2500 bucks i think it's pretty fair for that card and at number 12 we have another legend of blue eyes ultra rare this one is a psa 10 monster reborn this is a pretty awesome card because not only is it used in the anime a bunch it was really good in the game for a long time at this point it's kind of phased out it's not as good anymore but for about 15 years this card was banned it was way too good you could just bring back any card from the graveyard so it was playable it was iconic in the show it was rare in the legend of blue eyes set it's a beautiful artwork i personally really like this artwork some people like the ocg better but i think that this one looks really really nice it's uh, nostalgic for me personally and this card i have at two thousand five hundred dollars as well all right number 11 we have my dark in dragon which you saw in my top five pickups of 2022 this is a shonen jump prize card i paid two thousand five hundred dollars for this so i just kept it at that price it was a pretty recent sale so uh i think it's pretty fair this is a bgs 9.5 strong 9.5 quad 9.5 as they call it this is my only sjc prize card it's definitely the cheapest and most accessible of all the prize cards from shonen jump but it is the last one and is pretty awesome it's also playable if you play edison so if i ever want to crack this out you know could be lit not gonna happen but very cool card i think it's worthy of being about 2500 bucks pretty awesome looking card pretty iconic for being a prize card if you don't know prize cards were given out for winning tournaments and stuff like that so it's very limited in terms of the supply even though it's the most abundant of all the prize cards still pretty hard to find we are now cracking the top 10 we have the black luster soldier envoy of the beginning this is another card that was about five thousand dollars and now it has come down quite a bit i have it at two thousand five hundred dollars as well as those other two so you know you could flip those back and forth but this is an invasion of chaos first edition card invasion of chaos is a super rare box and also this card was super playable in goat format it was just really really good if you get it out on the field you pretty much win a lot of the time in goat format so it is a great great card in terms of playability back then as well as the iconicness of the anime and the collectability of it plus the artwork is just fantastic on this card so definitely a solid card in the top 10 and at number nine we have its counterpart in invasion of chaos the chaos emerge dragon envoy of the inn this is another card that fell down from about five thousand bucks this card has a recent sale for two thousand five hundred and forty three dollars so it's only slightly above the black cluster soldier but it's an iconic card from the anime as well i believe kaibi uses this in the third season in battle city it was also insane in the game they had to ban it one of the very first banned cards i think it was on the first ban list and then also the artwork is just insane and not to mention the invasion of chaos being very difficult to pull you got to have a hobby box to pull this secret rare so it's not easy to get it's pretty hard to find these days so definitely a solid card at number eight we have my only ungraded card in the list 
the Minerva, the Exalted Light Sworn. This is a not a Shonen Jump, but a YCS prize card. So it's the newer prize card, but this card was playable back then. So there's not as many copies out there that are, you know, in great condition because people were actually playing these. It is probably more abundant than the SJC cards in general, but it was also playable and iconic because people really liked it. It also has the waifu factor, which always matters in Yu-Gi-Oh! You may not care about it like me, but it matters. This card's expensive for a lot of the same reasons as the Dark End, just being the prize card, hard to get. You had to win a tournament to get it. And now eventually years later, you can get them from other people, but this card is really, really cool. I'm glad to own this one. So definitely a solid eighth spot. At number seven, we have a TP8 Ultra Rare Magical Arm Shield. You're like, what is this card? Like, why is this valuable? It's hard to find in general out of the pack because it's one in 108 to actually pull this card. Then you had to actually grade it a 10. And then those sets were pretty low like distribution as well because they only went to the hobby stores and stuff like that. So this card has not had a lot of graded 10s. I think it's an eight pop. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen. Maybe I'm wrong about that. There might've been a one graded recently, but I think it's a pop eight. So it's extremely hard to find. If you're collecting a full set of the ultra rares from TP and PSA 10, they're not gonna sell it because they have their whole set. So they'd have to sell their whole set to make it worth it so this card is crazy hard to find for that reason i've been offered about four thousand dollars for this card uh with this one it's they're basically never for sale because they're all in collections at this point so you basically have to go with offers so about four thousand dollars for this card and most people wouldn't pay four thousand for this but the people that need it for their collection would because they know the people that own these aren't going to sell it for the price of a set card because they know like the rarity and then it's part of their set and all that different stuff so they have to offer higher prices for this kind of stuff being low pop all right number six we have the cyber dark dragon an ultimate rare this is the one i pulled upside down out of cyber dark impact we graded a nine we also then regraded a 10 should have been a 10 all along in my opinion but that's how it goes with grading but this is one of my favorite cards i think the texture on it looks amazing the artwork is awesome it's really it's like kind of gx iconic but like not crazy so it's not like at the same level as some of these other ones in terms of anime iconicness and it was also never good in the game really so in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh. so it's really just like a rare card that you pull ultra rare out of cyber dark impact as i've said ultra rares in ulties very difficult to pull and uh there are just not a lot of these out there so i had to guess on this one because i haven't seen a sale of this in a long time a long time ago i got offered 6500 but i think at this point it's probably more around four thousand dollars now we're on to the top five we have another tp ultra rare this is royal decree same reason as the other one this card is really hard to pull it's only a pop eight i think the same as the magical iron shield so less than 10 of these in the entire world graded 10. and this one is also a great card like back then it was really awesome so it's better than the magical arm shield in terms Terms of playability it's also the same all the same great stuff that magical arm shield had going for it it has all of that then the artwork i think is really cool I mean, it doesn't have a lot of hollow in it. It has the sky back there and then the people. I think it looks great. It's an awesome looking card. This card I've been offered like 5,500 for it, but that was a while back. So I, I'm estimating that this is probably worth about 4,500 now. Our number four card is one you're probably really familiar with, a Genzo PSA 10. This is the one I pulled out of my Pharaoh Servant box back in 2019 and then graded it at 10. Back then it was like a $1,200 card. So it was always already really expensive. It ended up going all the way up to around $12,000 during the hype. And during the boom, but it has since come back down to about $5,000. This card is epic and iconic for many reasons. It was amazing in the show. The artwork is really awesome. It was extremely good in the game for a long time. You couldn't use any traps while this card was on the field. It's also one of the most epic looking secrets of all the original sets. So super strong card at number four. All right, number three is a card that I recently picked up. The Exodia, the Forbidden One, Legend of Blue Eyes First Edition. This card is of course super iconic for its first episode anime appearance when it destroys Kaiba. And of course, everyone who knows anything about Yu-Gi-Oh, even if you don't, you know about Exodia. It's like in the memes. It's like collect all five pieces of Exodia. It's just that well known around the culture of everywhere basically it's also a legend of blue eyes ultra rare so it's hard to pull it has all that going for it if you get the entire set this this is a really crazy expensive set it's also a graded gem mint 10 so it has all that great stuff going for it this card I think I traded for it around 5,000, but it, I think it could probably be maybe like more like 5,200. It's probably worth a little bit more, but it's hard to know because there hasn't been like a real sale for it yet. It was kind of a trade and I kind of gave away a little bit of extra stuff for it. So I'd go like $5,200 on this card. Now we're on to the top two. We have 
Blue Eyes White Dragon First Edition. This one's also faded with the lower name, which is really cool. And it's a wavy card, so it has all that going for it. It is only a PSA 9. If it was a 10, it would be my most expensive card by far, but it is only a 9, unfortunately. This card, I remember thinking it was going to get like a 7 or an 8, and it got a 9. So we got super lucky with this. It was really, really awesome. This card is worth about $5,700. This card in 9 used to be insane. I think it was like 15 k for a while, so I'm just happy that I got it, you know, not, you know, insanely expensive. I actually got to grade mine from a collection so that was pretty pretty cool this card looks absolutely amazing i don't know it, some people like and don't like the faded but i think it looks really awesome and of course it's blue eyes the most iconic card in Yu-Gi-Oh. so that is a pretty awesome card and finally let's see if you guessed it the number one card the same as it's been before the morphing jar tournament pack 2 gym mint 10 it's another tournament pack card morphing jar was really good for a while in the game it's also in the anime and it was really creepy i remember specifically being like wow this card is really weird uh, so it has some great artwork it's iconic it's in tp2 which is the rarest of the tournament packs in general all the tournament packs ever made this is the hardest one to find i personally graded this card myself in 2019 and i've had it ever since it was fifteen thousand dollars at one point i don't regret not selling it at all because it's come down a lot but uh, it definitely has lost a lot of value. This card's only about $6,500 now, which is still very, very expensive for a card, but compared to what it used to be, not so much. So that wraps it up for the top 25. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you guys have any thoughts about rare Yu-Gi-Oh cards, prices, etc., let me know in the comments. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxter, JT Cho, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanna, Dizzy, Flexi Boy, Hoppus, Choice 333, Micycle, James Jance, TCG Trusted Cards, America Deutscher, Supreme, Sage 21, Frankie Martinez, Nana Tai Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Min McGecko, Shadowfall, and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.